Hello everyone, my name is Lisa Shaw and I thought I would pop in here on the Brilliance Facebook page for a little bit of lunchtime learning. Another impromptu a live video. Just know that if you are um, signed up for Facebook and you like our Facebook page, you will also get a little pop up every so often that says when I go live, they'll tell you as long as you follow our page and you will also give you the option to choose to get notices whenever we go live. So today I thought I would talk to you about the stitching order and this is with the lettering tool. This is one of the features that is part of the Embrilliance platform and it works with both built-in, native, and BX fonts. It, most of the time you're working with this with Embrilliance X um, Essentials. So, also, just as you know, if you're catching this uh, later or you jump in afterwards, you can always watch the replay of this um, at another time. If you go to the little dot, dot, dot in the upper right hand corner of the post, you can choose to save this video to create your own Facebook video playlist. So let's pop on into the software and I'm going to show you about this really cool feature of our software program. Here we are in the Brilliance platform and I have a few samples already uh, set up for us to look at. On a lot of time, when we talk about stitching order, we're talking about how the letters are actually going to stitch. Normally, when you click on the lettering tool, so let me just do that real quickly here, click on the lettering tool, and you get the ABC. Let me put the block font on so that we have what everybody gets. There's our ABC stitching here. Those letters are going to stitch from left to right. So that is, no matter what you type in here, if we type in hello and hit the enter key, it's going to type the H, the E, the L, the L, the O, which is fabulous. That's typically normal. But there's sometimes where you want the letters to stitch in a specific order. For example, if you are stitching a three letter monogram and let's zoom in on these to right here. So I'm going to select the top one that I have made and I'm going to click the letter S on my keyboard, which zooms into the selection. If you look at this, this is the intertwined monogram from um, the itch to stitch. It, if you type in as if I typed in hello, it will stitch from left to right. So it will stitch the left K, the center S and the E. So you'll notice that the letters are kind of stacked on top of each other. Now this order is changed by going to the pull down menu here on the right hand side. And from that order, if you click on it, this gives you different options. So when you have that selected, for example, the one I have down here below it, which is the exact same monogram, I have the stitching order set to center, which would be the letter S, which is going to stitch first, then the left, which is the K, and then the E. So that changed the entire look of the stitch out because now the K and E are on top of the letter S. You can also change it so that if you wanted the, um, the left and the right to stitch first and the center letter on top to give you a different lettering look. That's the left, right, center option, which is here from, let me move out of the way here, from this pull down menu. So if I click on left, right, center, notice how the K and the E are now going to be stitched first and the letter S is stitched on top of them. So this is one way that you can create a decorative look or change the look of your monogram without having to break any of your objects. So I thought I would pass along this tip because some people think that that stitching order is just for ball caps for when you're stitching on a cap driver where you need it to stitch from the center and then the left and then the right. Well, it also works for monograms when you want to change the look or the layering of your letters. Isn't that kind of neat? This also, let me go back, click on my compass rose, and I'm going to click on the letter A to zoom out to all stitches. And let's look at this little logo here. If you notice, I have Friday Night Flyers, which is done in our hobo text, which is a built, um, a font one collection font. 
So it says Friday Night Flyers, and I have it set to circular text. This also has the stitching order tab. So if you were stitching this on a cap frame and you wanted the letters to stitch from the center to the left and then the right, you can choose this option. So let me, I'll have it set to normal so that we can go to our sew simulator here and actually watch. It's going to stitch these two, which we already showed. Then it stitches the logo and it will stitch from the left to the right. Let's go back select this lettering object and change this to center left right and we'll run our sew simulator again and you'll see that now a stitch from the center goes to the left and then it goes to the right so those of you that have a cap frame or a, or a rotating hoop driver on your multi-needle or the single needle tubular machine that has the cap driver on it that will help with registration the other thing, as you already saw on the bottom here, I have my letters set to stitch in reverse. So let's click on this lettering object where it says Amsterdam, New York. I have it set to stitch in reverse. So if I had wanted to stitch this, for example, I have a PE 770 and I have to cut my own jump stitches. So normally it would finish the flyers so go Friday night flyers, get to this S and have to jump all the way over here with that long stitch and then stitch on top of it. And if I didn't catch it, I'd have to pick out all those stitches underneath it. But I can set this one to stitch in reverse from my pull down menu here. Whoops, I'm in prop of it here. Um, the reverse option. And as you notice, as I sort of gave you a preview with the sew simulator, this allows my um, object to stitch from the right all the way backwards to the left. And then I don't have to worry about that long stitch pulling something or, or getting into the way. So these stitching order options, the order are available in circular text. So this is the third option here, as well as in single line text. So single line text also has the same version. Uh, I see a couple questions come through. I will have to go and check um, questions afterwards, but is this an update version? This has been in quite a few versions, so I would say almost a year. So if you don't see this pull down menu with all these cool versions, you need to go to the Embrilliance website downloads page to get the latest version of the Embrilliance platform and simply install it. Download it to your computer, close all of your programs and run the installation to the um, update and that will update your software to get these really cool functions. Just to give a mention, the click off of, whoops, click on the lettering option here. On multi-line text, there is no order. So if you're not seeing the stitching order on the multi-line text, you will see different variables here. Make sure you're not you're not in multi-line text. If you only have one line of text, you need to be, or you should be in single line text because that gives you all the stitching order options as well as styles and all sorts of other cool features. So hopefully you guys found that to be interesting and a little bit of tips and tricks on using your Brilliant software and the lettering feature, which is such a powerful feature in our program. Until next time, Take care and have a great week.